Hello and welcome to Frank's School, 85th day of the second year, first video. I'm teaching punctuation. Uh, and the story goes on. I have indented. There's this a new speaker. The last speaker was the storyteller. Now the farmer is going to say, it goes like this, Crow commanded the farmer, or I'll boil and or fry you. Some roosters earn their keep. Others do not. All right, uh, crow is a command, and the farmer says it. So it's his words, open quotes, crow. And since it's a command, it really calls for an exclamation point. Here's the dialogue tag, commanded the farmer. That calls for a comma, because now the sentence goes on. Uh, the farmer says, uh, crow or I'll boil. Uh, but I have to reopen quotation marks. I've closed them, and now I reopen them. Or, I'll, now this is a contraction of I will, so I use an apostrophe there. I'll boil and or fry you. He may boil rooster, he may fry the rooster, or he may do both. Well, when there's options like that, uh, a virgul is used. That's called a, a virgul, or a slash, or sometimes a forward slash, to show options and or. Fry you. Uh, well, let's have him still pretty angry. End of sentence. Some roosters earned their keep, others do not. Well, since I didn't capitalize this, this could have been two separate sentences. Uh, this, the cat. Uh, this could have been two separate sentences, but uh, I regard it, I actually think this calls for a colon. Uh, when you've got this situation. Some roosters are in their keep, others do not. I think colon is right. I, I should go back and look though, but you certainly could uh, use a, uh, a semicolon, which would suggest that the word but is just not there. Some roosters are in their keep, but others do not. When you've got two independent clauses in a sentence and there is no conjunction, no coordinating conjunction between the two, and a comma is not enough. You have to use a semicolon. Now, as I say, the argument here for a colon is quite strong, I think. But I should also remind you that I'm teaching old-fashioned punctuation, really. And later, uh, at the end of this, I think I'll show you my source. Where am I coming up with these rules? I'm, I'm so torn. I, I, I guess I'm going to put a colon there. Because I think when I originally wrote the story, that's why I had, had him say that. Well, that's the end of what he said, so we're going to close quotes. Crow commanded the farmer, or I'll boil and or fry you. Some roosters earn their keep, others do not. End of quotes. All right, now, what, uh, that's audience number one. People who only want to learn to punctuate English. For those who uh, would like to also learn how to pronounce English, if you find it hard, this is fun for me. Here goes my spelling system. Crow. Crow. Commanded. C. Commanded. Uh, the. Oh. It's not the, it's the. The farmer. I should also remind you that this is my dialect of American English. Crow commanded the farmer, or I'll, now, if I'm being careful, I'll say I'll. It's a little, in dialect, this would be owl. Uh, this would be a, a, a really a, a ooh sound, owl, I'll fry you, but you know, this, again, this is like a class. It's like I'm, I'm a teacher here, and, and so I'm speaking more carefully. I'll boil is going to be hard to represent. Uh, actually, probably most people would say boil. Oil. Boil. I think I have always tended, since I was young, to say boil. Uh, Boil. <laughs> uh, you know, this is this is not an exact science by any means. And or 
and or fry fry you some here comes the cat some roosters earn their their keep others others do not now I, I underscore words sometimes to show where the stress is just in case there be doubt let me try this again now crow commanded the farmer or I'll boil and or fry you some roosters earn their keep others do not spelling for pronunciation okay I have one more uh, video today I'll show you how that would be said uh, in German I think so please come back <laughs>